Hey everybody, welcome to Giftology. I'm John Rulin. You probably knew that strategic gifting is the ultimate way to build a personal brand and build relational equity and ultimately get referrals without asking. But did you know that this is a tactic to be used not just by the rich and powerful, not just by big corporations and B2B sales companies? Watch this video and learn how anybody, even someone just getting started, can affordably implement a strategic gifting system. Business leaders mean two different things when they say, I have no additional money for marketing. The first literally means, I have zero dollars for marketing. I'm just getting this thing going and any money I spend on marketing will come at the expense of a food and electric bill. <laughs> which, if you're in that situation, which I've been in before, I'm not gonna give you a takes money to make money speech. Although it's actually true. Instead, I'll say that strategic gifting for you is gonna look a lot like a lot of handwritten notes of appreciation. Send enough of those, and like my buddy, Mr. Thank You, and you'll have a very different business a year from now. However, the other type of person who says, I have no additional money for marketing, really means I can rebudget, move things around, and spend a few bucks if I wanted to. I just need to be convinced that it's a really good idea. This video is for you. Let's talk about some basic rules and strategies for people that wanna get involved on strategic gifting, but are on a very limited budget. Number one, begin spending in ways that make you truly different. While it's not technically a gift, 14 years ago I started buying metal business cards. I'd spend a dollar per card or even more. These things look completely different than any of my competitors, and were just too classy to throw away. One of the objectives of strategic gifting is to position you as on the level of your clients. And metal business cards do exactly that. Especially when everybody else is spending 40 bucks to buy them by the thousands. 10 years ago, I was at this NASCAR event and I had the chance to meet the CEO of a huge multi-billion dollar retailer. He starts asking me about what I do and I start talking about gifting strategy and using gratitude as a competitive advantage. You could tell he didn't give two rips about gifting or gratitude. He just wanted to watch the cars go around in circles and eat nachos in the luxury suite. But when we traded business cards, he does a double take with mine. He says, that's the coolest freaking business card I've ever seen. What do you do again? Our entire conversation changed because of a $1 investment. We do the same thing now with our metal letterhead, which costs nine bucks. When we write our notes of appreciation, which of course we still do because those never go out of style. Number two, gifting on a budget. Send higher quality, less expensive gifts. Most people, when they think strategic gifting, they think they're only gonna make an impression if they send something like a $500 watch. But most of your affluent customers, the ones you most want access to their network, they wear $5,000 watches or more. So the only message you're gonna be sending them is, hi, thanks for doing business with me. I'm not on your level. I once heard of a billionaire who'd gift his contacts $100,000 sports cars. So instead of spending $500 on a watch, spend $150 on a belt. Yes, spend less money, but on a more practical item. Instead of blowing $500 on a watch, spend two or three or $500 on a handmade personalized coffee mug. When it comes to gifting, decent quality whispers, but high quality screams. Scale your budget down to the highest quality item that you can afford. And the more practical it is, the better because your recipient will be thinking, I never spend $200 on a garlic press or an ice cream scoop or whatever, but man, do I love owning this. And finally, number three, gift as a percentage of your net profits. That way you're never spending over your head. We recommend new gifters start at 5% of a client's net profit. So if a client is worth say $10,000 in sales revenue, but $2,000 in commission or net profit, you're spending $100 to $300 on gifts for that one client. Not coincidentally, the person who's worth $2,000 today will be worth three, four, and $10,000 in the next three years when you continually invest in the relationship with gifting. In fact, in some cutthroat industries, this investment, it's not optional. Do you know that Vegas casinos spend 20% of their revenue on givebacks and gifts? Yes, 20% of their revenue not net income, their top line, on their biggest, most baller customers. Why? 
because they know if they don't treat these people like kings and queens, they'll go right across the street and go somewhere else. We're a gifting company and we do about 20% of net income. But it's okay to start at 5% and then scale up to 15% with your best VIPs. The big idea here is in order to save on budget, you can't treat everybody equally. It's a huge mistake. You'll find that when you spend as a percentage, your gifting turns into an investment, not an expense. Does your organization regularly do strategic gifting as a percentage of income? If so, I wanna hear about it in the comments. Ladies and gentlemen, take this type of incremental approach and you'll find that what we found, what thousands of our students have found and what tens of thousands of business leaders who have a heart for radical generosity all know to be true. And that is strategic gifting is a smart investment. So make room in the budget and go make it happen.